Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Greetings of peace and blessings, everyone. I was asked to comment on the recent podcast where Jordan Peterson interviewed Muhammad Hijab. At first, I declined because that's not the intention and the reason we made this channel. We truly want to focus on educating, inspiring, and transforming the lives of people by focusing on the traditional teaching programs. However, having watched the podcast, I believe there are things to be said and for all to benefit, especially when it comes to the manhaj of da'wah to non-Muslims. So before I comment on the Jordan Peterson uh, Muhammad Hijab podcast, I want you to reflect on the following uh, for the next three minutes. Give me your attention, please, for the next three minutes. Uh, we were born uh, Muslims, alhamdulillah, but we often overlook the struggles non-Muslims go through. They do have an excuse. That's why it's our job, our mission, to introduce Islam to them. Um, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us the best nation introduced to humanity, to teach and preach the haqq, the truth. We have to be understanding and patient with non-Muslims. We have to sympathize with caution while doing the da'wah because it's very difficult to be in the dark. And if you have not been uh, there on the other side, it would be impossible to comprehend. Um, any revert will tell you that if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and guidance, they would still be in jahiliya, ignorance, ignorance, no matter how academic or bright they are. The conversation has to go on with respect, wisdom, sympathy, and understanding. Throughout our history, our worst enemies accepted Islam not because we were tough and strong, but because of our characters and sympathy. But why sympathy? Why sympathize with non-Muslims? Sympathy teaches us how it feels to be in jahiliya, in ignorance, how it feels to be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not bestow his blessings on them. It reminds us also that if you are Muslim and acting as a Muslim, you are among the chosen and the rest are sinking in darkness. Sympathy reminds us of the status or the condition between belief and disbelief. To sympathize is to fully understand that our job is to convey the message only. You may want someone to be a Muslim because they are a friend, family member, or a loved one, but that's not the case. To elaborate more, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, verse 125, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَصَّعَدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ كَذَلِكَ يَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ الرِّجْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The translation is so whom so ever Allah wills to guide he makes his heart wide open for Islam and whom so ever he wills to let go astray he makes his heart restricted and constricted as if he were laboriously climbing up in the sky. In this, Allah lays abomination on those who don't believe. This ayah verse talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala signs of guidance. Uh, the word yashrah is from the root sharaha, which literally means to cut something or operate, to open up enlarge, expand, or uncover, etc. Meaning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to guide someone, he expands his heart to Islam and strengthens him to submit to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah bin Mas'ud uh, reported that when this ayah, this verse was revealed, the companions of the Prophet والسلام, requested him to explain the meaning of, surat, uh, of Sharh al-Sadr, uh, the, the, the opening of the chest or the heart. Uh, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a light in the heart of a believer through which his heart opens up for perception, understanding and acceptance of truth. So the Sahaba again still asked, is there a sign which will help recognize the person who has such sharh al-sadr or the opening of the chest? He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, yes, the signs is that the akhirah and its blessings, 
become the object of all his desires. He avoids and called for desires and fleeting enjoyments and starts getting ready for death before uh, before it comes. Now comes the second part of the ayah uh, of the verse which is very important. And whomsoever he wills to let go astray. He makes his heart restricted and constricted as if he were laboriously climbing up in the sky. This is the other condition of the heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. The dayq is from the root daqa, which means narrow, choked, or overfilled with something. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to send someone astray, his heart closes up, meaning he is unable to accept guidance no matter how intellectual or smart they are, thus being deprived of faith. The bigger your container, the more you can contain. The narrower your container, the lesser you can take, you can contain. Notice that one meaning of the word daiq is overfilled with something. What is the heart overfilled with? With the desires of the dunya, desires of life. It is already filled. It doesn't have any room for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his message, Islam. The last part of the ayah verse is a scientific miracle that just recently been discovered as if he were laboriously climbing up uh, in the sky. Sa'ad ibn Juwayr commented that in this case Islam finds every path in his heart impassable. Ibn Abbas also commented saying just as the son of Adam السلام, can't climb the sky, Tawheed or monotheism uh, and faith will not be able to enter his heart until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to allow it into his heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such heart conditions. I mean, I've been following Jordan Peterson for some years now, and there are two things that I discovered. I'm not criticizing Jordan, but I want you to know why Jordan thinks the way he does so that you understand uh, Jordan Peterson. He is a psychologist who sees things from a psychological perspective. He is identified as a conservative, although he's not. In terms of theology, he is not that well versed or read, and he does actually admit admits that. Even some of the finest minds focus too much on the details to the point that they get lost in the details and they miss the big picture. That was the mistake Jordan made at the podcast by asking irrelevant questions and kept interrupting Muhammad Hijab instead of allowing himself the golden opportunity he was granted. And it could be his only life chance to learn about Islam. However, Jordan did show some genuine intentions toward, towards Islam and Muhammad Hijab. I say that with caution though. Uh, because from an academic, academic perspective, he wasn't like other intelligent, dishonest people. The conversation was very interesting uh, and, and, and good overall. I, I'm glad to see Muhammad Hijab on Jordan's podcast. And as a public intellectual, Jordan had the ability to converse with uh, different type of people. A believing Muslim that represents Islam and its values instead of the regular same old tape playing over and over. Because that's exactly what we see today in the mainstream media and platforms where extremists, so-called ex-Muslims and people in personating to be Muslims trying to represent Islam or speak for Islam. Um, it, it was very positive overall and Muhammad Hijab reciting the Quran was the best part of the whole podcast. Jordan got exposed to the divine words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his followers as well. He wasn't attentive as he should be in the beginning though. Um, but if you see the podcast again, I think he was very surprised and amazed at the discipline of the Muslim believing man explaining Islam. I'm not sure his followers and the people around him are going to be happy about it though. The pinnacle of the podcast still remains when Jordan ended the podcast with tears. I'm not sure, however, if they are tears of guilt to right his wrongs. 
especially what he said about Islam and our Prophet or tears of shame for having his wrong preconceived idea about Islam and Muslims. I give him credit though for going against all the odds to invite Muhammad Hijab. Um, however, uh, Muhammad Hijab did not waste time in inviting him to Islam. And we should do that in every conversation we have with non-Muslims. It's imperative to speak to people in manners of respect and wisdom and cling to the traditional way of calling them to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a lot of useless da'wah going, going around, a lot of debating and yelling that's of benef no benefits to nobody. Uh, while we might win a debate over a thing or two, we could lose the opportunity to get somewhat closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because debating and arguing isn't about winning after all. As with all Jordan's podcasts, he never fails to anger people. And he did actually anger me when he asked Muhammad Hijab, can't there be peace between Christians and Muslims? I thought to myself, Muhammad Hijab has been a good and a calm kid for an hour now and he's going to lose his mind. I was anticipating Muhammad Hijab yelling and screaming. I, I don't think Jordan sometimes knows what he's asking. As an academic, he should know better, unless he's just being silly. And, and that's why I question his ability and, and, and how deep his intellect. Another thing that really makes me question Jordan's thoughts is his unpredictable personality. Um, Islam and the possibility of peace is the title that he gave his podcast, uh, this podcast on his YouTube channel. I strongly disagree with, with that statement. It should have been something like how I got it wrong about Islam or the preconceived thoughts I had about Islam. Having said that, um, now let me tell you a bit about Jordan Peterson and you can make your own judgment. And this is independent thought outside of the uh, podcast, but still somehow related to, uh, to the topic. Let's not forget that Jordan Peterson came to fame and publicity right after his confrontation with Kathy Newman, which was full of question marks, uh, pseudo facts and conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Um, his debate on the gender pay gap the campus, post-modernism, patriarchy, and his book, The Twelve Rules for Life, awarded him the attention he was looking for, especially from the right-wing media, describing him as, I quote, the cool, rational man of science uh, facing down the hysteria of political correctness. Jordan thinks of himself as a classic British liberal, whose focus is the psychology of belief. Matter of fact, he just released a video yesterday titled Why I Love Great Britain. I'm not sure if you see the controversy here. Much of what he talks about is very familiar, especially um, his critics of feminism, downfall of masculinity, and the modern world. M marginalized groups are infantilized by a culture of victimhood and uh, offense taken. Political correctness threatens freedom of thought and speech. Um, ideological orthodoxy undermines individual responsibility and so forth. You can read this stuff any day of the week and uh, perhaps agree with some of it. However, he never follows up on these ideas by speaking about the roots of the problem. We have spoken about the philosophy behind every matter in our previous videos, I think Jordan lacks the philosophy of deeply comprehending these matters. Therefore, he can't address them properly. He can talk about feminism all day long, but he will never tell you the cause of the issue because he is not able to. Or maybe he's he refuses or on purpose. He's like the guy that starts a fire, calls the fire department while he's running away. Intellectuals have, um, intellects have criticized Jordan for his inconsistency. Um, example of that when he took a stand against LGBTQ issue by refusing to be forced to use someone's preferred pronouns. However, he stated elsewhere he's fine with using people's uh, preferred pr pronouns. Um, so he's 
criticism rises and falls and changes his mind based on on the occasion uh, it's worth mentioning that Jordan studied political science and psychology but he weaves several more disciplines uh, such as evolutionary biology anthropology sociology history literature religious studies into his grand theory rather than being specific and focused he claims that concepts fundamental to social justice movements such as the existence of patriarchy and other forms of structural oppressions are treacherous illusions and, and that he can prove this with science again he lacks depth in discussing the uh, philosophy behind this uh, matters um, here are some of his inner beliefs so you have an idea some of them are like the idea that women were oppressed throughout history is an appalling theory the idea of Islamophobia is a word created by fascists and used by cowards to manipulate morons. Another idea is white privilege is a Marxist lie. Uh, believing that gender identity is subjective is as bad as claiming that the world is flat. The other idea also is what if progressives are the real fascists? Oh, no, 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 no. In, in many ways, Jordan still thinks he is an old-fashioned old conservative who mourns the decline of religious faith and the traditional family. But he uses off-the-moment tactics, except that he's not. His contempt for identity politics includes what he calls the pathology of racial pride. He doesn't fully endorse the far, far right, but he flirts with their memes and overlaps with them on many issues his audience actually is is a proof of that uh, he calls ideas he disagrees with silly ridiculous absurd insane he describes debate as a, com a combat uh, on the battleground of ideas and hints at physical violence too uh, his hate for women is very obvious and if you watched any of his uh, uh, podcasts, you'll see that and calls them crazy women because he can't hit them. That, that's what he says, according to him. In debate, as in life, Jordan also believes in winners and losers. It's true that he's not a white national nationalist, but the whole notion of cultural Marxism promotes just that. The arc of radicalization often passes through this more um, moderate ideologue. It's enough to mention that he intended to launch a website that would help students and parents identify and avoid corrupt, what he called corrupt courses, with postmodern uh, content within five years. He hoped this would starve postmodern new Marxist cult classes into oblivion. Jordan shelved the plan after a backlash acknowledging that it might add uh, excessively to uh, current polarization anyhow i hope we get to have the chance to appear on different platforms whatever they might be as long as number one we are familiar with who they are and number two we are very straightforward about what islam is and what islam offers Hopefully, it'll resonate with, with them and accept Islam, inshallah. Because people will run into Islam in a way or another. And those sincerely looking into Islam cannot deny but submit. Above all, it's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide. This is the end. You're watching Aziz Life 360. This is Alhamra Studio Foundation. Fi amani wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.